Good afternoon to you all. It is the end of another week. It is the end of the first week of um, this research. And it's the end of a theme. Uh, we have finished the topic, the theme of animals. Um, so I'll be talking about that. Uh, I'll be talking about the ongoings in PUIB this week. Um, I have a PowerPoint to share with you. I'll try and be as fast as I can. Um, here we go. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get straight into it here. Right. Okay. So, just as last week, I spoke about the UIFS briefly. And the learning areas. So, I'll be going over the learning areas. Uh, literacy, communication, arts, uh, personal, social, emotional, knowledge and understanding of the world, uh, maths and physical, but physical's taken a little bit of a twist simply because uh, of COVID. Um, it's, it's tough to, to do something as a, as a big group task um, when there's not really any touching and then we might be sweating and things like that. It's um, can be a bit tough. Uh, so physical, unfortunately, is taking a bit of a, a back seat, but I'll, we've still done some things. Um, so I'll get on with it. So yes, Animals and habitats. It was the final week of the topic of animals and we focused on habitats. Um, we've been doing this for a while now, even over Zoom, we were looking at the polar regions and the Arctic, right the way through to what animals do, what they eat, so on, and then where they live and how and why, things like that. I'll go over the book quite quickly. Um, it's not something I really want to talk about, but I think you should know, um, just in case. We did uh, Can, um, Sight Words book. Thinking skills was a very basic um, A-B patterning. Um, very, didn't take very long. And maths, we had three pages. It was addition up to 10 some cutting and gluing as well. Um, but yes, uh, the mandatory book work was, was completed, usually a book a day, um, along with the journal we have and the handwriting book. Um, so that's the book work for this week. Understanding of the world. Now, uh, one of the tasks we did this week was, it was to do with habitats and animals. So. As it was the last week, we, we did a bit of a review, a vocabulary review uh, to do with animals. And we were matching pictures to the names of the animals. So we had like a farm, sort of small world environment and like a sort of safari savanna. Uh, and during free choice, the children had a chance to, the class had a chance to play. Um, in small groups, of course, maybe in pairs. Um, there's a lot of interaction. Um, checking out, basically sticking a picture to to word, um, which was good, and it was sort of it was a, it was a nice task because it was relevant to the theme. So the knowledge aspect um, met phonics, and uh, it led to sort of role playing and discussion, and then other ideas would appear and why why do we not have uh, ice sort of worlds why do we not have rainforests and jungles so it stimulated debate and and role play amongst uh, some of the smaller groups as well during free choice literacy uh, we began the week by looking at texture it's something that we'd not really done so it's something that i thought was quite important and Luckily, we we found some resources linked to the theme of animals or pets, where we had this dog, and I um, created some uh, texture vocabulary, where we were linking the bones to the words, so the class got to see the word visually, like rough, shiny, and things like that, and match them. Uh, it did well. Uh, it went well with communication. The, some of the children would play this uh, daily uh, towards the end of the week as well. We're still playing in. 
uh, in pairs, taking their turn, putting their hand in the, the kennel, the dog's kennel, and then matching the bones with the words. Um, texture as well it came into the, the, the theme, and it was in, involved in the artwork. But uh, this was quite, it was much more successful than I interpreted, um, particularly to do with communication, because preference and opinions uh, appeared. And the feeling and the description of how the bones felt fuzzy and then relating that to other things in their lives, animals, pets and things, or things they've touched, trees and things, it, it, was, it was a good stimulus for discussion. Um, and it's something that even without me there um, in a sort of um, child-led scenario, the children were talking amongst themselves and playing independently, which was really good to see. So yes, it would turn into a knowledge activity. Uh, social, um, linked to preference. Some of the children liked the shiny and smooth bones but openly said they don't want to touch the bumpy bones. So it worked well. They were using the target vocabulary. Um, yeah, it's something we can refresh later uh, to, to, to see how much has been retained. And it can be used with other activities as well. So that was the literacy element, along with the small wealth that you just saw as well, the understanding, the knowledge. And we also did journal of handwriting. Linked to the topics, uh, the animal habitats where animals live, stimulated discussion, drew a picture. Yes, the journals their work, so it's up for their own interpretation. Handwriting focused around looking after animals and how they're important. Um, <laughs> the word important brought up other discussions because it's quite a complicated word, so that led into other things. Uh, which was good. Arts and design. Uh, we made some leaves this week linked to texture and habitats, rainforests, forests, things like that. Texture and habitats, it, it worked well, met well. So we were using paint and colored pencils. But if you can see on some of the leaves, you see sort of these lines of like claws and scratches. We used forks and uh, other materials, pom-poms, for the children to create their own texture uh, using sort of a color, their own colors, things like that. Um, it was good to try and use, this was, we did this on Wednesday and Thursday, it was good to try and use the vocabulary that we'd begun uh, implementing on Monday and um, it worked well, some, some retention there. We were able to discuss bumpy and rough and smooth. Um, it, it was good, it's a, it's a nice piece of work. Um, yes. The maths, <laughs> the maths took on an element of its own. It moved more into role play eventually. We looked at addition, just like the weekly maths book. Um, but the addition that we did was to do with a shopping trip. I wanted to recap money. Uh, we'd done money, we'd looked at money over Zoom, but there'd never really been any hands-on experience and it's something I'd not seen them doing um, face to face. So they had an option where the children were given a set amount of money each and they could go shopping and buy three items and we were focusing on expensive cheap as well in the the communication uh, vocabulary aspect the literacy aspect and i wanted to set it up as a task where it would replicate an actual supermarket so you would have dairy meat dry foods drinks and things like that fruit and veg so the children understood that things were in certain places um, one thing that was good in all of the groups that did this, all of the children uh, were able to talk about snacks and not buying junk, uh, which was good uh, to show some self-awareness and again, retention from other topics we've done over the, over the years really at, at school. Um, 
it was good. The, the downside to this is uh, it can quickly move into a role play and social situation. This had to be something which was adult led um, because if I would step away, the addition element would uh, disappear and it would become, uh, it would still be good, but it would just be purely social and role play. Um, and I wanted to, 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 to push and carry on with the addition element. Um, so you would pick three items, maybe you'd have a uh, hundred dollars. So what could you get for a hundred dollars? Uh, the idea of things being cheap and, and, and expensive. Yeah, so picking three items and then choosing the money, the correct amount that you would need. Um, we even quickly looked at change, the idea of receiving money back. Um, but again, that's, that's more advanced. We don't need to really do that yet. So that was the maths. Uh, personal, social, emotional. Uh, throughout the week, we've been talking about habitats so we were creating our own class tree. Now, we used a big piece of paper and some popsicle sticks and the children created a tree uh, in which uh, we would put on animals that we desired to save and to conserve. So it was to do with um, conservation, uh, zoos, deforestation like chopping down trees why do we do it uh, even if it's bad for the animals we still do it why things like that ocean sea turtles plastic recycling um, and the children enjoyed the idea of saving an animal um, it helped as well because it crossed over with Putonghua and uh, with Miss Yan Miss Yan was doing the same thing uh, so it was good to do it in both languages. Um, and then we finished off by painting the tree, but we did a sort of Japanese sakura sort of tree to make it different. And it's on our wall now, but I don't have a picture of it because it is, uh, well, it's not actually on our wall. It's in the process of going on the wall. It's currently drying. Um, there's paint all over it. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it'll be dry soon and it'll go on the wall. So yes, we desired certain animals to save and we, uh, we went for it, yeah. Personal, social, emotional, that was it with the tree. And I mentioned physical was a bit tough, but we took part in a STEM activity again with a claw and it was sort of, it was harder than it looked at first. A lot of the children were like, oh, so easy. But um, if you see the cup with the straw, this is sort of, it mimics and replicates a, an animal's claw. So we spoke about claws and what they're used for and, and why do you have claws so on. Um, and which the children then had to save these sea creatures by taking them away from the shark and putting them into the blue uh, ocean <laughs> next to uh, the shot. So we were sort of still theme related and mindful conservation and things to do with the sea. The only part which made it even more challenging other than getting to grips with the claw to try to make it work, which was quite tough, um, was then we added a clock <laughs> and we recapped time. So the children would be given one minute to save as many animals as possible. And this became quite excitable. Um, we did it in circle time and then it was left open for sort of free play. Um, very popular, something I would look into doing more. I'd like to try and do more STEM tasks um, because it was challenging, it was more challenging, but it is stimulating and it's different. And I think they enjoyed the STEM activity. Um, especially when we can't really do any physical play as a class, we can maybe try and do a few more STEM activities and they can have a go. And that's it, yes, that is it for another week. So that's the end of, let me close it. That's the end of the animals theme. Next week, we move on to the first week of plants and flowers. We have a birthday party on Friday. Um, 
another busy week, but I, I won't tell you anything. I'll, say, I'll save it for the next video, or there's no point here, yeah? so I won't go into too much detail. Uh, stay safe. Thank you for watching. As always, if you have anything you'd like to ask or leave a comment, you can do it in the, the, the channel. You can send me an email. You have my email address. Or just call up or whatever, whatever suits you, yeah? Okay, thank you for your time. And I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.